So here we are. If you don't have your mood page, that's okay. You can download it from Brightspace if you submitted it to me anyways, correct? Everyone at least has some remnants of either if it's not on cloud or it's not in this computer, it should be on, on Brightspace for you to download. So what you're gonna do is usually you click on your mood page just to have it because guess what? Our mood page is gonna be the one letting us know what to do with the color, how we want the color to be, okay? Meaning we're gonna create a new file the same way that we've been doing all this time. We're gonna go to print. We're gonna letter and a half by 11, 300 PPI. RGB, all the same. It's gonna be the same one. Remember, if you're gonna be landscape, you go landscape. If you're gonna be portrait, you go portrait all the time. So then this is crystal, sorry, color story. Now, Everyone knows what a color story is, is, correct? Yes? Everyone familiar with what I mean by color story? It's just the focus of the colors that you want to be shown in your collection the most. Don't give me 10 colors. Try to give me like between four to six. The main colors. Usually it's like two, you can, you can do like a, like a formula. At least two basic one fashion color that's very bright and another one that just complements everybody. You understand? So it can be at four to six is a pretty good number. Okay. So because those colors we're gonna be using for our prints and we're gonna be using to design the clothing and we're gonna use just to create a whole collection digitally. So what we're gonna do here is I'm looking at Adham and I like that red. I feel like red and black are definitely going to be in my color story. Navy blue is gonna be my color story, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, if you press I as in in, you're gonna notice there's a little eye drop tool. Or you can click it right here with a little parrot, with a little hummingbird. If you hover, let's always be in our layers, on the color and you click on it, look what happens it chooses that red. Or if you want different reds, it will change it. You see that? And if you, I click and hold, I will be going true colors through the whole image. You see that? That's what we're doing right now. Try to get used to it. I'm just looking for the perfect red. I think I want something darker. So it will show you, I think you know, look, if I click on the black one, and I click on the red one, and I click on the yellow one, one second, you'll notice that it will show me the bottom color is the, for, the latest one before that one. And the one on top will be the, the one that I'm choosing now. So if I go again and click on a green, it will show me that the red was the one that I chose before. So just so you understand, Sometimes you use it to compare because let's just say I like that red, but I kind of want something darker. I like it here. That's fine. So now we're going to go into our new file. We're going to create a new layer. How you do that is make sure you're in the layer box. If you're not, go to a window, go to layer. If you don't see your layer box, go to a window and go to layer. Right here at the bottom, you will see a little plus sign that says create new layer. Click on it. You have a whole new layer now. Now you can go and we're gonna go rectangle tool all the way to the bottom. And look, automatically, if you look right here, right where my fingers automatically that fill becomes what I picked before. You see it? Automatically. So then we've noticed the rectangle tool, even in the marquee, can be a square tool by pressing shift, correct? Yes, yes, yes? Okay. So if I were to press shift while I'm drawing, it's a square and I let it go. Done. This is it. OK? 
okay? I want to duplicate this because I want to create another color. I said four to six colors, correct? There's a few ways. If you want to go back to your layers, you can see what happens. There you go. We can replicate it. How? If we hold Option, and we did this last week, you notice how it does a little double? If you see the white arrow underneath, and you hold Option, and you click and drag, you have another square. OK? OK. Now, I want to change this color again. How do I do that? We're going to go back to my mood board. And we can click I for eyedropper. And I want that black. I select, again, this. And I want to change it. It's right here, the fill. It shows you right here, recently used colors. Click on it. Done. OK. Look, it's very intuitive. So Photoshop might not show you this. I have the beta version. You guys might have the CC, not the CC version, sorry, the 2023. This might be up here, correct? This might be on top bar but it will show up. Then once again, I hover, I click down, wait, hold on, let me, show, let me do it again. Ooh. I hover, I press Option or Alt in PC. Option is for Mac up on, and Alt is in PC. As soon as I see that double arrow, I click and hold and drag it. Click and hold and drag. Okay, and let go. That doesn't work is because I did it too fast. So click, hold, drag, and let go. You only let go once you stop clicking, okay? It just takes a little bit of practice. Then let's just say, you know what, Professor, I, I kinda like this burgundy, but it's not the right burgundy yet. Remember how we played with the hue tool a little bit last week? We go here, we go to adjustment. Oh, one second. Yeah, it's because it's a smart object. I can change it later, but what we can do is, there is a way to go into fill. There's also pastels here if you want. There's already swatches. All of this to create a swatch library for color. And we're gonna get into it in a little bit. But the other way to do this is there's a few ways to do it. Either you do smart objects, or some people think it's easier to do this. We create another layer. We go into marquee. I can do circles too, by the way. You can also do circles if you click and drag. You see that? Everything changes. Same thing. You can do whatever. Oh, there's a kitty. <laughs> I don't know why there's a cat, but there's a cat. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a kitty there. So you can make shapes of whatever you want. For example, I kind of want to have this as a disk, but I'll show you later how to do it. How about if we just do this? All right, this is with smart objects. If you want something more customizable, let's just say you want, let's just use the lip stool. Same principle, if I don't hold shift, it's not a perfect circle, correct? I'm gonna click that with my new layer, make sure I am in the correct layer, and then what you're gonna do is shift, command, F5, shift, F5, not content aware, foreground color, and that's that. Or you can go into edit, fill, and that's it. The difference is that it's not a smart object. You notice that? So I can actually change it into chip hue really quickly. Ta -da, done. You see that? The smart object just lets you if you wanted to, you can change the colors based on the color palette if you want, but it's up to you which one you want better. Okay. Oh.
to deselect, I think you guys notice if you have something selected and you don't know where it is, then it becomes really annoying to figure it out what to do. There's a shortcut. You do Command D, it deselects for you. The other way is to click anywhere outside the canvas. Even if that doesn't work, Command D or Control D, that's deselect. So all of this could be in one layer if you wanted to. I don't want it in one layer, you know why? Because I want to be able to change colors as I want to. And if by any chance, oh yeah, it's in one layer, you click, you select it with your marquee, you can just cut it and paste it to create automatically a new layer. Okay? So, let me change it. Now, so far so good on how to do colors right now? Kind of. Okay, so I want you to practice the eyedropper tool and try to at least get one color into that new page. It doesn't matter if it's smart object or the marquee tool, just try to do it before I go into a more advanced way of customizing things, okay? Try it on your own. <laughs> 